Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you my favorite books of 2018. Hi guys, I'm Franny and welcome back. Today we are gathered to see what my favorite books of 2018 are. 2018 as a reading year kind of sucked. I didn't read a lot, I didn't get to a lot of books that I really wanted to read and there were quite a few bad books but I did read some great books that I'll be talking about today, but not all of them are my favorite books of all times. Not all of them are books that are going to stay with me forever and ever. These are just great books that I loved reading and that I recommend to you, but they're not my favorites, but they're great. Okay, and perhaps for that reason I couldn't and I really didn't want to rank them So they are in the order in which I read them without further ado. Let's see what they are in January I read Our Souls at Night by Kent Haruf. This book is about two old people Eddie and Louis who have lost their spouses They live in a small town of the United States and they feel alone and one day Eddie goes to Louis and offers to spend the nights with him not having sex or anything like that but just spending the night because the night is the worst time in the day to be alone and they will just talk throughout the night and get to know each other and it was just a sweet and melancholic story but it also had an underlying message of doing what you feel is right what you want to do without caring about what society thinks or what society expects what is right and what's wrong just do your thing and i really loved this book also in january i read Canone Inverso by Paolo Maurensig. This is an Italian author and this book has been translated into English. I think it has the same title, so please, if you can, just get a hold of this book because it's just perfection. And this book is a literary fiction. It revolves around a violin. There's an auction of a very prestigious violin and the man who collects violins goes to this auction and buys it. Then he goes back to his hotel and there he in his room barges in a man who was late to the auction and who absolutely needs to have that violin because there's a story a very intriguing and intricate story around that violin and you go back in time to I think it was Vienna in the 20th century and there's a lot about a musical academy and World War II it, it, it is so complex and just absolutely mind-blowing and so I, I loved everything about this book and I will talk more about this book in the future because I absolutely want to read it but it was incredible please pick this up then in February I read The Arrival by Sean Tan. I've talked way too much about this graphic novel on my channel this year. It is a silent graphic novel about immigration and about different cultures collapsing and about what it feels like to go to a place that you don't know alone away from your family and it was masterfully done. The art in it is out of this world and it is such a relevant book to today's society and I loved it and I would give it to anybody to read. In March I read A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo by Jill Twiss and this is kind of a parody of a book. <laughs> That came out in March and there's John Oliver behind this book and th that's what prompted me to buy it and to read it but this is just a cute graphic novel about this bunny here who is gay and who falls in love with another bunny and at the end of the graphic novel they get married and it's just a sweet story and it's <laughs> the shortest thing ever. There's also an audiobook narrated by the actor who does Sheldon on A Big Bang Theory. I cannot remember his name. Jim Parsons. And it's like seven minutes long and it was just the cutest thing ever. So just do yourself a favor and pick this book up. In September, I listened to the audiobook of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, and this was such a roller coaster. This is a mystery that plays with time travel, kind of. The main protagonist, Adam Bishop, has to solve a crime that happens 
every night at midnight and that is because the same day happens over and over again and each day he wakes up in a different body of a different guest who were invited at this party in a mansion sometime in the 20th century and it's just brilliant and it was so complex and so well crafted and so well written and the audiobook is fantastic so I definitely recommend that as well but I just love this book I don't usually go for mysteries and thrillers and such but this was just so fast-paced and I was held in such a suspense that I just I loved everything about this book and it's it, it's in my top favorite of the year so it's a good book in October was it in October? Or was it November? In November, I listened to the audiobook of Number 11 by Jonathan Co. And for all the books that I've talked about in my wrap ups, you will find all the links in the description down below and in the cards up above. So there I will go more in depth about synopsis and what I liked and what I didn't like. But this book was just brilliant. It is kind of a collection of short stories that have different characters, but at the same time, these characters are all related to the main character of the story of the whole book. And they are just so interconnected with each other. And it is about coincidences and the impact that we have on other people's lives. And it deals with a lot of delicate issues in today's society, such as health, such as immigration, such as rich people versus poor people. There's a lot in this book and it was brilliant and it was so detailed but at the same time it was not you know the kind of details that you find in essays and non-fiction it was still a novel a very engaging one a very suspenseful one and I don't know how the author did it I was just so surprised and impressed and Jonathan Coe is great he's a great writer and I cannot wait to read something else by him. Then in November I also read A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness and I know it's not your high literature okay but I had such a great time reading it and I think that it is such a great start for a paranormal series and it was just so complex in the way that it dealt not just with paranormal creatures but also with science and biology and history. I mean there's a lot of knowledge in this book and scientific theories and the descriptions were incredible it was beautifully written and I adored it and it was such a huge part of my life in November because I read the book and it is quite long I watched the TV show and I loved the TV show and I did a video review specifically on this book so if you want to hear me gush about it you go and watch that but it had to be in my top whatever of 2018. In December, I read And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness. This is a beautifully illustrated retelling of Moby Dick from the perspective of the whale. I did a video review about this book, so again, link down below and in the cards up above, but I absolutely adored it. Patrick Ness never disappoints. This story was so precious and bittersweet and it made me think a lot and it definitely gives you a lot to think about specifically for today's society because it is about the rivalry that exists between different people different races and I loved the message that I got from it and again definitely recommend it to anybody I would force this book into anybody's hands because they're just so much more to learn from this and everyone would find something in it to love. It would appeal to anybody, okay? Just like the arrival in a way. And last but not least, I have the third book in a series that I listened to on audio and I finished listening to this particular book of the series on Christmas Day. And it is Before the Devil Breaks You by Liva Bray. However, this is an ambassador for the whole series really because I loved the whole series. The second book a little bit less but the first and the third book were just absolute perfection. I have talked so much about this series once again. I loved everything about it. It is YA but it doesn't feel like YA. It is a paranormal series that is set in the 1920s and the author 
First of all, she writes like nobody else. There are so many quotes that I highlighted and so many scenes where I just wanted to stop running in the morning and sit down and write what she was saying because it was just so masterfully said and captured into words. But it is set in the 1920s, so of course there's a lot about fascism and eugenics and immigration into New York and integration of different cultures in such a huge metropolis. There's a lot about science and how much you can push forward and when instead you should hang back. Religion is a huge component of the first book specifically, but also of the third book. There's communism, there's the Ku Klux Klan mansion, you have mental asylums and reflections of the goodness of humanity and the nature of evil. There's a lot. The characters are fantastic. There's a huge cast of characters that you all grow to love throughout the whole series. Even the ones that you weren't quite fond of at the beginning, you end up loving in the end. And it happens so much. It's such a roller coaster of things happening after one another. It is scary, it is terrifying, but it's also exciting. And the author doesn't shy away from more delicate topics. I loved everything about these series and it is not done. There's a fourth book on the horizon, far away, and I'm so looking forward to that. But yes, I absolutely loved it. And if you can, please listen to the audiobook because General Lavoie's performance was on point. So these were my favorite books of 2018. In the end, it was a good year, specifically for booktube and for all of the friends that I've made here. And I am so excited for what 2019 has in store for us. But this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you would like to, what were your favorite books of 2018. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Warm hugs.